I'm kicking it at my winter camp and I've been using both my hatchet and my knife to do a lot of wood processing, both for the fire and just for everyday camp tasks. And I'm going to go through the differences between these two tools, what you can accomplish with both of them, some of the everyday tips and tricks, some skills that you really need to have in your arsenal and what not to do. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. So I'm camped out in the Matrosberg at the moment and special thanks to the reserve for hosting me. So when we're working with sharp instruments, safety is the first thing that we need to consider. So we basically have what we call a triangle of death and that is basically your thighs because your femoral artery runs there, um, but it also includes your wrists and your hands. Um, not just because of the risk of bleeding excessively if you do cut yourself, but also if you do cut your hand or you injure yourself, you're that much less likely to survive in the wilderness. And when we think about um, sharp tools in the bush, we often think about processing wood, especially for a fire. So this is my Gransfors Brook small belt hatchet and I've also got my BK62, the Becker Kephart knife um, over here. And these are my two favorite tools aside from my Silky Pocket Boy, which is the only other thing that I would really add to an outdoor um, trip here is a saw. So a lot of the things that the saw can accomplish, you can also accomplish with these two instruments. And a lot of the things that you can do with one of these tools, you can also do with the other, um, but the technique varies a little bit. So safety first, the best is to always have a backstop to work on or something solid. Um, not just so that you don't cut yourself, but also so that um, you have something hard to work on so that whatever force you're applying to the wood that you're working with um, doesn't get dissipated into the ground and you actually are effective and efficient with your energy. If I'm working with a hatchet and I'm, for example, removing bark from something, if I slip, where is my blade going to end up and what is going to be in the way? So very often we forget or we neglect to think about fingertips um, or just the side of your hand or you know something that gets in the way. Maybe it's your kneecap or your ankle. The first thing that we think of um, when we think of processing wood with a blade is splitting wood for a fire. Um, and that can be done both with a knife and with a hatchet. Obviously, if you are splitting big logs, then you would want a proper forest axe um, or even a much larger axe, but you can actually come right with a hatchet. Now, this is a really teeny tiny little transfers brook hatchet. It does actually go on your belt quite easily. Um, so it doesn't split large wood. And I wouldn't recommend that you would try to split large logs with a small hatchet unless you have no other option. A really cool way of splitting wood other than just chopping it straight from the top which is what we usually tend to do um, and we would usually use a backstop such as this um, is to actually lay it against something and all you have to do is swing down and this becomes your backstop. And so I've got one small piece that I can now use as kindling for my fire. Um, I can continue to process this down and if I find that I get to a point where I can't really lever it apart at the moment I would be able to but I need a little bit more help I can actually go ahead and hold on to it there now once again safety is important here so I'm not going to put my hand where I'm holding the log I am actually going to hold it with a separate log and now I can go ahead and use this as a backstop to split the wood further. It does of course help if your hatchet or the tools that you're using are really sharp. And that's something I do like about the Grand Spurs hatchets is they do maintain an edge really, really well. Make no mistake, the knife doesn't fall short here. The knife actually has the ability to split large pieces of wood as well. That's quite adventurous. Now there are two ways that you can do this. You can either start by batoning the wood with your knife like this, or you can start 
with the knife sideways like that. Now in any which case this is a really big piece of wood to try and baton a knife through um, so I would actually start on an edge and kind of work off all the edges until I've got a smaller piece of wood and what you do is you try and find the faults in the wood and then just work on those ones. If I were going to baton this there's a fault here there's a crack just over there so I would actually start by just taking a sliver off of that. Now this piece of wood as it were doesn't have a flat surface on either side which is ideally what I would want. Ideally I would want to be able to put it down um, and just start batoning right through because it would stand flat on that surface but that is not going to happen here. When I'm batoning a knife I don't want to baton right on the tip of the knife. Um, I kind of want to be like towards the middle third as far as possible. I'm going to get it in there and then I can go further. Okay, so now you can see that my knife is sitting quite solidly inside my log. So now I have control over this. Much better control than I had before anyway. And all I have to do now is to just control the angle at which the blade goes into the wood to make sure that this sliver over here actually comes split off. When I start to get to the bottom of this piece of wood, the last thing I actually want to do is to baton right through it and have my blade end up somewhere on something that is rocky or solid um, because it is going to dull my blade. So the ideal is to get almost to the bottom and then just twist the blade so it all comes apart. So right over there, I can twist the blade and then I've worked off a sliver. And so I can go around and around until I've actually worked my way through this log. Now obviously in this instance the hatchet would really have an advantage over the knife but it goes to show you you can accomplish the same thing with both tools. If that doesn't work another way that you can split a log with a hatchet um, is by actually putting it down on a surface So now I've got basically a crack that is forming inside the piece of wood and by just continuing um, to hammer down into this um, log I will eventually get through it, eventually. So now you can see I've got a really decent split inside the wood just from hammering it down like that. And I can now either just pull it apart or I can use my hatchet to just further the crack. So let's see, if I can pull it apart then that would be ideal. Yeah, so that's it. Easy does it. Now if I were to baton with a knife in the parallel way as I described earlier, that would look something like, that'd be a good piece to use this for something like this. So again I'm going to try and find the fault line so that's a decent fault over there. It does go past a knot ideally you want to avoid knots because the wood grain twists at the knot and that makes it really difficult for your knife to get through the grain there and um, you can potentially dull your blade that way but I think it's going to split over there and by that time I'll be able to pull it apart. Okay so knife and I find the fault And again, you can see it really easily splits that piece of wood. So really easy to do with both a hatchet and a knife. So if you're only carrying one of the two on you, you should actually be able to manage quite well. And it has actually split right up to the knot there without a whole lot of work. Now I can turn my knife. It's not ideal to try and baton through there, but I'm gonna see if I can split it open a little bit further and then go further with my hand. So again, I'm not splitting it all the way up to the bottom. I'm literally splitting it to the point where I think I can break it open. And it comes apart quite easily. So I don't want to baton through the knot. It's too much pressure on my blade. And I don't want to baton right into the log underneath because I could dull my blade that way, especially if there's a rock or something like that that I'm busy working on. Um, so ideally always try to keep your blade sharp. Something else you can do with a hatchet, keep my sunglasses in a safe place, is to mount a piece of wood 
in the hatchet. And then what you can do is to turn it around and use the weight of the wood to actually split on top of the hatchet. Like that. So if you are having a hard time getting a piece of wood to split, um, turn it upside down. As a last resort, you can also baton um, a hatchet into a piece of wood, especially if you're having a hard time just getting um, it to seat inside the wood. It's not ideal. There's a lot of controversy around batoning a hatchet or batoning an ax, but it's a tool, it needs to be used. And if you're not gonna use it, then why have it anyway? Um, so if you don't have any other options, then by all means, go ahead and baton it in there. Especially if you just wanna get it to seat. And then again, I can use the weight of the wood on the hatchet to break it. Not too bad. I think that concludes the brunt of the work. From here on, we talk a bit about finer tasks. Just as a general rule of safety, if you are using a hatchet or an ax, um, the ideal is to not break your vertical plane. So, for example, you never want to aim down and change direction um, heading towards one of your legs and you always want to be wide-legged leaving enough space for the hatchet to slip past your legs. When we start looking at some of the finer tasks, um, let's say for example we want to do a bit of planing um, either because we want to make a hearth board maybe for a bow drill kit um, or something like that, a knife is really cool to do that with. So this BK62 knife is really, really nice. It is a full tang knife. Um, it is about a 13 and a half centimeter blade. So it gives me plenty of space to work with. I did actually do a full review on this knife. If you are interested, you can go and have a look at that. None of this would really be a half board. Ooh, that's terrible. That's not gonna make a half board at all. Let's say I wanted to shave um, this into a flat piece of wood here because I wanted to make a hearth board. Um, I can use a knife to plane it until I get a really flat surface. So because this is a brilliantly sharp knife, this is going really easily. And you can see that comes off really easily there. And as long as my knife remains mounted in my log or whatever I'm using as a backstop, I can do planing quite easily with that. And the wider my angle is, the more wood I'll take off but the harder I have to work. And the narrower my angle is, the finer the shavings will be. So this is also a technique that you can use to make a feather stick, for example. This might be a good feather stick. Um, so feather sticks are used to make fire. And what we do is we just use a very thin angle. It's way too thick. A very thin angle just to make fine little wood shavings When it comes to doing the same with a hatchet, um, you basically choke up on the hatchet and instead of moving the wood against the blade, you'd be moving the blade against the wood. Now nothing gets fixed to your base here. Um, and again, you'd have to just find that angle and work it really carefully. And so you can make a feather stick with a hatchet or with a knife. The one advantage that I would really say my knife has over my hatchet is that this has a 90 degree spine on it. My hatchet doesn't. Um, so I would have much harder time starting a fire with a ferro rod with this hatchet than I would with my knife. But I could also just modify my hatchet or actually just take it to my bladesmith because he's the one who put the 90 degree spine on for me. Thanks, Ander. Um, and ask him to also just put a 90 degree spine on my hatchet. So these sorts of modifications do actually just make life a whole lot easier for you. It's not really nice to have to modify your tools, especially when um, they are like craft works in themselves. 
but it does actually just allow for much easier use out in the wilderness. Well, that's it from me on knife and hatchet skills. If you've liked this video, remember to hit like and subscribe. Remember to check the links in the video description for the Patreon link. There is a Live Ready Patreon page. It helps me to continue making videos such as this one for you guys. And until the next time, Live Ready.